Hey, Ike here. Today I'm working on page 10 of First Sun and Sword, and this is a new scene. It's going to be set in the city. It's going to be a whole new challenge. So let's dig in. This is the thumbnail. I did it in pencil, and then I used Sharpie just to clean up my lines and make sure the shapes were readable. Um, and that's what I'm looking at on my phone while I draw the page. You'll see my phone sitting there uh, on, on my drawing board. The lap board does wiggle around a little bit, but it kind of moves with me. It doesn't really uh, affect me. And, uh, and I like that I can adjust the pitch of it just by um, raising up or lowering my seat um, or sitting a little closer to the table or whatever. So it works fine for me. Okay, so now I'm drawing these environments in one point perspective mostly. Um, it is convenient to, to try not to make it more complicated than it needs to be when it comes to the perspective techniques. Um, now, you'll see I'm trying to find the curve. Uh, so I've, I've, just, I've just got the curve of the top of that in perspective. I kind of found my horizon and I'm starting to lay out things. Um, I already did this in the thumbnail to a degree. So I have a guide of what I was trying to pull off. There is a lot of subtlety when it comes to working in perspective because, or laying out your environments in your shot, because just like if you were drawing a figure or two talking figures in a panel, your environments are, are like your figures. Uh, the eye is going to move across the page and read the image uh, just as if they would with, with figures. And, and I say that because most people have a lot more experience drawing figures than drawing backgrounds. Um, and even in the same way that when you draw a figure, uh, you may not have a perfect idea of where they're going to be positioned. Um, like you're not necessarily having a perfect, uh, underdrawing structure to the figure and then drawing on top of that, you might, kind of put the hand in one place and, and then fill in the arm uh, uh, with the foreshortening that's involved with that, like your figure in perspective um, and, and kind of just scribble and find those things. And you kind of have a, this map in your mind of what the human proportions are and how much uh, you can just go by feel on that. And it's the same way with your perspective drawing uh like backgrounds and stuff you can kind of fill things in the same way you would with a figure so here i am filling in uh all these little forms now uh, the most important ruler like measurement unit of measure that i'm using is is the human figure so one of the first things i put in there was my main character and uh, so that sword with sun next to him right there in the middle towards the bottom and I put in that figure and that tells me how tall a figure is So you notice I, I drew two horizontal lines parallel with each other kind of coming off of his his head and his feet off to the side and I kind of drew a This you know uh, the little circle there that's that's over on that edge that is like that's a that's just an aid for me. There's nothing I actually want on the page in that spot. It's, it's him in that spot. Because when you move it off of the center, uh, like where your vanishing point's going to be, you move it towards the edges, then it's much easier to see how the size of that figure will vary by depth, by how close he gets to the vanishing point. And so that is my guide. So I, um, along that line... Uh, that's going back to the vanishing point, you'll see another figure right in line with it. That is giving me guidelines. Um, I'm throwing in some texture on the wall up there, um, some background elements. Uh, it's, it's always tough to know how much detail is necessary or how much you want to add. I do try not to add too much in the pencil phase, but I often add a little more than I'm going to actually need when it comes to the inking phase. Um, 
but in this image uh, you have the vanishing point right inside of this large uh, entry to the city the, the doorway to the city and it's all torn down because the idea is that uh, there's there's a history to this city and there's a, there's an older civilization with newer ones on top of it um, but that vanishing point is right there in that doorway so your eye is drawn to this door and at first I was putting a uh, uh, a little room off, uh, like a uh, a little uh, room with a little roof that was kind of built into the side of the wall inside the doorway, but I realized that was just uh, too distracting. Um, that was just just me riffing on what I might want to do, and I remembered to throw in some birds. So um, that's something that's kind of easy to forget when you're drawing. A background, an environment, you might think of the buildings as, as rectangles uh, and, and so on, and you're just like filling it in, but let's give it some life. And, uh, and for me, that's, that's going to be birds in this case. Uh, keeping in mind, there was probably a lot more uh, birds in the past before uh, modern society. Um, yeah, now it's, you know... Uh, We've moved on to the next thing. I've got sword on the right there, and it's a slight, uh, the camera's slightly up above his head, kind of aiming down to a degree. What's nice about that is um, you don't have to draw any background because it's sort of uh, the, the ground behind sun is what's going to be behind him. It might, it might be 50 feet out. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe 20 feet of ground is showing. Um, doesn't really matter, but it, that's a trick. Sometimes if you have a, the camera's low and it's aiming up at your figures and there's just sky behind them, then you can skip drawing the background. Same thing. If you aim it down towards the ground, um, I didn't draw the word balloon yet, but here in this panel, sun speaks first and then sword responds. Makes sense to have sun there on the left and sword on the right. And, uh, and, and I'm putting in details here, but the simple shape was established of just the cloaked, you know, cone shape of, of one, uh, and uh, of one person. And then the other, it's just a larger, same shape. Um, I really like to have really simple shape language where that image can be read quickly it's easier sometimes more than others in this next panel um you'll see i threw in some uh some perspective lines going towards a vanishing point I corrected that there they are approaching the guards to the city they're going to see that someone else is showing papers to get into the city to the guards and well then we'll see that So, um, so here I've got the foreground sword and sun walking towards the guards. And then you have the guards doing their thing with, with the man showing his papers. Um, I have a pretty high vanishing point. Um, the horizon line's pretty high on that panel because I wanted to be able to show most of the figure of, of the guards. And there is an issue with scale, of course, like uh, notice that the top of, of Sword's head is pretty in line with the top of the guard's head. Now, he's a little taller than them because he's a big man. I kind of sometimes I'll have some some big brutes that he's up against, but these guards are, are a little uh, a little more close to average. So he's even bigger than they are. Um, and, uh, you know, so his head lines up with theirs. Um, and the shoulder pretty much lines up if you drew a line there. Uh, so, so that's important that they appear to be in space together. So if their if their proportions align, you can't just throw a figure in the foreground and then have, uh, the background figures, in the mid ground, um, not, not in perspective. Uh, it was also intentional that sword and son are on the left of the page and what they're looking at and where they're going is on the right. 
Remember, left to right reading. The guards stop him here. And you see how he's a little bigger than they are. Again, I threw on some lines of kind of giving me a feeling of where the horizon is, what the angle of the ground is beneath them. Uh, and that line uh, was adjusted after I made the initial one. But it shows me, um, you'll see that the two soldiers pretty much line up on that line. Their shoulders are in line. Um, and their heads are probably in line too if I've completed like a, a perspective grid. But I'm just faking it here. Sorry, that's off the camera. I just went over and I was not sure earlier if I wanted to throw in the shadow um, of the building, uh, of, of like the big gate, the big wall. And I decided to throw that in, uh, cause I figured I can make my final decision in the inks. So for now I was going to put it there. Yeah. Adjusting this figure. Sometimes it's easier to just erase the whole figure and give it another go. So there's always the challenge of, uh, you want to see the faces and uh, expressions of characters, but you don't just want to see the, the sides of people's faces or the, the back of their heads. And so with this angle, I've, I've got the soldiers kind of turned in towards each other so that one of them, you can see his face a bit. Um, and in uh, stage productions, you might have characters faking it. I mean, even in, in uh, cinema, they, they may fake it a bit and be looking a little towards the camera or a little towards the crowd, the audience, um, rather than right at the person they're talking to, they face more towards the camera or crowd. And that, uh, you know, that can be done in comics too. You can fake that a bit. Um, I try not to. So, uh, I just try to position them and position the camera where you can catch the things you need to see. The important thing in this panel was the money being exchanged. So sword is bribing them, uh, to let him into the city. And, uh, the idea here is he didn't even have to comment that he was bribing. Um, he just knew that you just pay a coin and you get in as if it's like an everyday occurrence that you just, this is just how things work. So, um, that's the idea here, but I didn't need to show, uh, I need I needed the the hands exchanging money to be very prominent and I also wanted to show son noticing that. So uh when you're newer at comic books especially it is difficult to capture more than one action in one panel. It would be easier to show sword hands the guy money, son notices and makes a certain expression about it. Um or even son grabs the money, he pulls it out, he hands it to the guy. Some of that would can be clearer that way. Or or you think of classic comics, uh, sometimes it would just be the words on the page. It, the, the action isn't even clear, and it's jumping so quickly between actions that, uh, and they're just trying to, to show the, the figures and the art uh, in, a, in a much more commercial way, I guess, like to get your attention, um, rather than storytelling cinematic kind of way but but a lot of old comics they have a lot of captions explaining what's happening because it's not that clear um but i really like uh i like the storytelling through the visual so uh to capture you know to capture those two actions occurring and both are important uh and have the eye go from sun to the hand there uh that's the kind of stuff i love Here, the guards turn, wave them on through the gate. Uh, the being really good at comics is not just being good at drawing in perspective or good at drawing figures. And honestly, it's that's that's not even the the most important thing. Um, but how you choose your camera angles and how you choose to tell the story with the visual is like the thing it's what distinguishes a good or a good comic artist or not so um 
sometime I'm going to have to go in more detail on why I choose these camera angles. I think I've, I've made a few comments that could indicate why on some of these things, but, um, that that's something that I realized after making some of these videos so far that, that I haven't really commented much on and it hasn't been clear, um, that, that some, you know, that that's missing, but that, that is, I just want to say that, that that is a big missing element is how you choose, uh, to position your characters and your camera and the body language and all that. Um, so here the, uh, the hands and now the, uh, as they walk by son looks up at the soldier and he looks very domineering and looks down at him. So I've got this extreme up angle kind of um, well, a little, a little extreme, a little dynamic, uh, to show how big and imposing he looks. And, and again, here's the, I want you to see son's expression, but I want you to also see what he's seeing from his perspective. So back to that, where do you put the camera? Uh, and this is, this is the important thing of, to develop, to be a good comic book artist, a storyteller. And, um, I had to find a, an angle on a, for his face there that you can still see his face and get a sense of his expression. Um, but really you can't in real life. You wouldn't be able to see like his face at all. Cause he would, his face would be completely turned or, or maybe he's just peeking out of the corner of his eye, but, but I'm trying to fake that angle a bit and just capture enough to communicate, um, the, for, for people to see how, that, uh, his expression a bit kind of identify with him uh, while seeing his, uh, what he's seeing, uh, a newer comic artist might do that in two different panels. Um, but, and there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but if you break everything down into more and more panels, it does affect the pacing of the storytelling. Um, so it, it's good to be able to do it in less. It's a good skill to develop. Here I was again struggling with, do I put little uh, rooms built on the side of the inside of this wall? I decided not to because again, it was distracting. The eye would go to that spot and look at it and, and miss the main point, which is uh, sword and sun coming through this gate. Yeah, you'll see again, I found my horizon line. I found the shape of the door. The first thing that I want the eyes, you know, to go to here is near the vanishing point. It is near the center of the page. Uh, and it's the first thing I draw and the first thing I lay out some perspective lines for. I don't do a whole perspective grid. I don't need it. And I also did the left side of this doorways wall first, because that is the more challenging one because it's on such a, it's on more of an extreme angle. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that you saw a little bit of its width, not, uh, but, uh, you know, that, it, that, that was readable as, you know, a door, a doorway and equal in depth to the other side. So the vanishing point had to be very particular in, in relation to that. And so that's why I drew it first to make sure that I could adjust the vanishing point to match the wall I'd just placed. I'm filling in the space uh, after you see the, the, the main focus of the main character, then you see this uh, broken down statue. There clearly used to be a human form standing there. As soon as you walk in the city, uh, it's aged and broken. Part of the idea here is that when the lizard men took over uh, society, they um, let things decay and they broke things down. Destructive. Uh, or that, you know, human civilization decayed itself a bit, uh, which made them vulnerable to uh, the lizard men coming, uh, taking over. But uh, regardless of that, it, it gives life to the, to the world. So, I mean, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into this. I'm just throwing in uh, some, some uh, booths for merchants like a sense of shelves and some pots or something, a few figures exchanging or talking, uh, just the little touches like that, that are really just props I'm throwing in help bring the world to life. And you can do as much of, or as little of this as you want. 
Um, I'm trying to find a sweet spot where I can do it quickly. I can do it from imagination. Um, and, but still give enough details that, that it enriches the world. Um, but, but you can go so overboard with this that it just takes an insane amount of time, uh, to work out, uh, what, what these details are going to be. So here I've got some more guards. I wanted you to get the feeling of the, um, that they're being watched, that they're, um, kind of hemmed in when they walk into this city. Uh, and so to have a few guards that have, a, uh, a large kind of large mass, um, in that left side of the, of the image, it, it is imposing. Uh, it's not the first thing your eye is going to go to cause it's, I'm going to put it in black mostly and it's going to draw the eye to the center, but you know, it serves story purpose too. It's not just um, filling that space with black to draw or something to draw the eye where I want. It's also for story. Uh, again, what you choose to show, how you frame your shots. This is uh, such a big part of making comic books. Here I'm working out some shadows. And I've got the finished pencils now. We're coming into uh, inking. I have a new pen so all the other pages I think I managed to get them all done maybe on the same micron pen uh, after a convention um, I noticed that the nib was the tip was uh, getting kind of flat so uh, when I came to draw this page I'm like oh this feels different I'm not used to this which affected my the quality of my lines but I was also telling myself okay don't push hard be really gentle let's not wear this pen out and flatten its tip um, so that was, that was kind of strange. It's strange how it can affect the quality of my lines. Just little differences in how the pen feels. Uh, and I kind of have to you know, try to compensate for that so that there's consistency in my style. Um, yeah, little bitty details. Uh, how much is needed to show the human form? Uh, when it's this small, this is part of like a style, uh, the style of a comic artist. How do they simplify things when it's really small? Um, yeah, it's pretty easy to just do figures like a, a triangle or a rectangle with a smaller one on top of it, uh, a head on top. Um, maybe a little bit of indication of legs. Um, But yeah, through that gateway there, you see a little bit of the city. It's not clear what you're looking at exactly. And that's another thing about style. It's like, well, sometimes you might want to show something that isn't clear what it is because it's so small, but you still want to show that something's there. Um, and so, um, sort of like field of view or, uh, you know, at what point, what distance, uh, at what distance or point does it th do things blur and just kind of cease to exist beyond that point? Um, which could, you could think of that in, in cinema or something with a, uh, with the lens focused on a figure with a blurry background, you could picture that or like in video games where like, as you're maybe you're, as your character's like running or moving forward, you see the trees kind of appear <laughs> out of thin air, uh, at that certain distance uh, at which the world generates. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's another choice that you have to make is, is how much, how far will you show things and, and how will you show things when it's not clear what they are, what kind of little squiggles and lines will you put, uh, to indicate that things are there or will you just do it in color? But for me, I try to do it in, in line work. That's, uh, that's the thing I enjoy most. This panel was a little, uh, a little frustrating that, um, as I inked these in, I realized that, uh, these figures were getting cut off right about at the foot or ankle with the edge of the panel, which I try not to do. Um, so when you, if it where the edge of the panel or the view, the camera, but where the, where the figures hit the panel, you don't want to cut them off. It's odd places. If you, if you cut them right off, like at the waist, 
like it just looks funny. You don't get that impression that the body, the, that the figure continues. If you cut off like right at the hairline and then it's like, oh, they don't have hair, like, or they don't have a top of a head. Um, so, so you try to cut things off at a point where the imagination fills in the rest of it and it doesn't feel awkward. Um, and there's, there's strategies and rules to that, but you can do it by feel too. But I would encourage you to look it up if you don't know about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I tend to start on the left side of the, the panels and, and then move to the right. But sometimes I also work from the mid-ground or foreground and back uh, to a degree, too. So that's, uh, that's something I, I... There's different reasons for that. Yeah, there's the their their armor is like crocodile uh, leather, um, and they serve the crocodile king. And people even eat the crocodiles. And crocodiles are in the uh, in the the streams that uh, the canals that run through the city. So, um, you know, it's just like this. It's just this element I'm throwing in. But um, the way I did that was just some really simple lines uh, on the on the jacket, you could do a lot to bring out that texture. And I, I love comics with lots of texture. It's real tactile. Um, but I also love comics that are kind of cartoony and, and just give the, give you a gesture of what's happening and, and move on. And, and I'm leaning that direction. And part of that's because there's so much that I'm showing and I want to do it quickly. And there's nothing wrong with that, wanting to be fast. Um, so like when you're, when you're new at this or you're trying to develop yourself, you, there's this pressure to look really professional a certain way, a certain, uh, you know, try to attain a certain quality. Um, but if you, if you focus on speed, um, if that's something that's important to you, then that can pay off because you put in more hours drawing, then you're going to get better. Like I, I was told, I'm sure there's still some truth to this now with my work, but I was told uh, in my first few years of drawing comics, uh, I would get uh, feedback from professionals and they'd say, you need to work on your anatomy, work on your figures. And I took it with a grain of salt because they're right. I, I knew it at the time. They were right uh, that I had flaws in my work. Um, but the way I was going to get better at that was not by just drawing figures, although that's not, you know, if you want to do that, go for it. And I did some of that. It's not like I didn't look at anatomy books and do some work, but the main thing I did was draw comic books and keep producing pages. And I tried not to slow down too much and do too much referencing oh, when I draw my figures. Cause when, when I, uh, cause, cause then what are you practicing? Perfect practice makes perfect, not just practice. So like, what are you really practicing? And if it's just referencing, then you're going to get faster and better at referencing through the, through the whole thing. But as you see with what I do, I'm trying to do something where I'm not doing a lot of reference, where it's pulled from my imagination and thrown onto the page. Um, and, uh, and I want my characters to be like acting and alive and have facial expressions and movements they're trying to do. And if I was just drawing figures in a book, I wouldn't be drawing them at these angles. I wouldn't be drawing them handing money to someone at that angle and so on there, uh, and certain facial expressions I would be trying to do and so on. Uh, so the challenge, uh, the challenges, uh, that come up, the situations that come up drawing a comic, uh, are unique. Uh, and that that can help you get better at your figures too. Here I'm cleaning up the page. <laughs> uh, you may have missed it. It was so fast, but I decided to try to throw some white out and show the edge of a cape. And then I put black back over it. I changed my mind, but I take a little time at the end to do some white out, to do some cleanup, uh, add some ink in certain spots to try to try to get things uh, where I'm happier with how they look in the end. And I get a better idea of that after I've erased pencils. So there's the finished page. 
I'm pretty happy with it. And it's a good warm up really for all the pages coming up where I'm going to show them walking through this city to their next uh, location. So tune in next week. We'll just keep uh, adding this. And remember, you can read the comic and it'll include this page colored, the whole finished page on the, the website for the comic. And you can get to that through my website or through uh, the links in the description. Catch you next time.